Welcome to the Bay State Golf Podcast. I am your host, Sean Melia, and today's topic is going to be weekend golf trips throughout New England. Looking forward to sharing a few trips that I've done, uh, and we'll also make up a few uh, that I have not done that I think might be worth maybe checking out and trying out. So before we get to those weekend trips, which uh, we're all excited about as spring approaches and we're dreaming about all sorts of different golf things we can do when uh, the weather gets really warm and really nice. I just want to put a quick plug in for a few things that I'm working on. Um, Obviously, if you're listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube, please subscribe, uh, give it a rating, give it a review, uh, whatever you need to do to make sure that you get this every week when they drop directly to your phone or to your YouTube um, press subscribe, press follow, whatever, whatever that button says would be a huge help. Also, I have every Friday, a newsletter that goes out where I collect things I've written for Bay State golf, for amateurgolf.com, for new England golf journal, um, have a couple kind of pretty great podcasts actually on those other channels coming out as well with, um, with some heavy hitters. So looking forward to sharing those uh, and all of that is packaged in my newsletter every week. I, I write a little something. Um, I also have an event that I am running alongside uh, Jordan from FN3 Putt or FN3P. And we have two events planned, one at Butterbrook on May 30th, one at Crosswinds on July 18th. It's two-man aggregate net best ball or two-man aggregate net, um, 150 bucks to get into each of them per person, 300 for a team. If you want to sign up on your own, you can. Uh, and all that info is in my newsletter. It's also on my uh, my Instagram account as well and on his. Uh, so that's another thing worth checking out if you're looking for a way to play a little competitive golf, but have some fun, uh, meet a bunch of people. Maybe you could get a get a friend to play with you, get a couple friends and uh, and enjoy a day. They're both Thursdays uh, during the week. Um, Tea time's not shotgun start, so everything starts late morning, 10 o'clock, and we'd love to see you there. So that's uh, another thing worth worth checking out. It's called a Half Swing Series, and um, like I said, everything is in my newsletter. If you're here, you probably know about my Instagram page. It's baystate underscore golf, and that's where I post uh, reels, a bunch of reviews about golf courses, videos, little short ones, 90-second ones that uh, highlight things that I like and don't like about golf courses all over the state. Um, so that's that's kind of everything. The newsletter you can find at baystategolf.beehive.com. And beehive is B-E-E-H-I-I-V.com. Uh, you can subscribe to it. Uh, would be would be great. Slowly building out uh, some some subscribers there too. Okay, let's get into weekend golf trips things that you can do with i had people you know asking about bachelor parties so some of these might fit that bill um maybe you've got a significant other who really isn't into golf and there's a couple trips here that you could go you could steal away for 18 holes and have some other things to do the rest of the day um you could go just with a couple buddies on a trip that has nothing to do with a marriage uh, and, and a bachelor party so Whatever you're looking for, um, try to create a couple little trips. These are mainly trips that I have done in um, the last couple years. So some of them are, you know, a, a little bit of driving between places based on where we're staying or who I'm going to see, uh, maybe playing on the way up or the way back, um, trying to just catch some different golf courses as I'm maybe sitting in a car for, for a few hours. So that's what I've done here. Um, and I've got, I think I've got five to, uh, to highlight, and then I'll, I'm going to throw in a, you know, a few at the end that, um, don't need to go too in depth with, but ones that are certainly worth, worth trying and, and checking out as well. So let's go with my first one. I have talked about these two golf courses, a bunch on this podcast, on my Instagram, um, on my web page, on my newsletter, it, they're, they're two courses I, I like. They're in an area that I really like in Massachusetts. It's at the very edge of the state on the west side of the state. 
Um, and that is going to play Taconic and Wabika out in Williamstown. This is a, a trip I've done. Um, I have actually never played both of them in the same weekend because I'm typically out there with my wife or with family. Um, and I just kind of managed to play one 18 hole round or the weather doesn't cooperate and I, I never get to play more, but I've played both of these places. I've done a bunch of other things around the Williamstown area as well. And, um, so these are, these are two courses worth seeing. Taconic is going to be kind of the splurgy round, but it is an incredibly great golf course. I have raved about it in a million different places. I could talk about it to anybody at any time for a very long time. Um, it is one of my favorites in the entire state. It is one of my favorites that I've ever played. Uh, it just kind of hit me in the feels. I, I can't really completely explain why, but it is a little expensive. If you would like to play it, the nice part is it is also public. Uh, you can get a tee time four days in advance, which is another kind of tricky thing with a weekend trip, right? You're, you'd like to know you can play, uh, make sure you, you know, check their cat, their playing calendar for sure. If, if they have weekend events or club championships, they, they also host college events. Um, I know they have the women's NESCAC, um, championships in early May. Uh, they've got the mass women's am in August, uh, I believe. I've heard through the gra grapevine from a couple people that they're also doing a little work that Gil Hans is coming in to do some stuff to some of the greens and softening, um, I think 10 and 12 and, uh, just making them a little bit more playable, a little bit more potable. So there's some stuff going on at Taconic right now. So you definitely want to check when you're going to play. If you would like to play and you have no affiliation to a member or an alum or a student or a faculty member at Williams college, which is, um, affiliated with the course, it's 180 bucks to play. If you want to play it twice in a day, the replay rate is 100, which all told to, you know, spend 140 bucks for each round and go play 36 at Taconic if you can handle it and if you can do it. Um, and if you have the time and they have the time to let you do it, totally worth it, I think. I think 180 bucks for that golf course in good condition is. Uh, is not a steal, but it's, it's pretty close considering there are some places you play close to the city that are not quite 180 bucks, but you're paying $120 and you know, you're, you're not going to get the same quality, um, as, as like Taconic. If Taconic was inside 128, it would, it would cost, it would, it would be private, fully private. Um, and you wouldn't be able to play it. So 180 bucks if you are um, unaccompanied, but a guest helps you out. So if you know someone who could get you out there, it's 100 bucks. Um, if you're with a, a Williams alum, it is $100 as well. Let me check my notes here as I spew some of this out. If you're unaccompanied with a guest, it is $100 to walk. That's the restart fee. So 180 bucks, then 100 bucks if you want to play it a second time. Um, if you're a guest and you're playing with a member, it is $70 to play. So if you know someone who is uh, a member and they want to play with you, it's $70. It's an incredible, incredible deal. If you are a Williams alum or a spouse, it's 120 bucks. If you're a guest of a Williams alum, it's $150. So they have a bunch of different prices. But 180 bucks if you just want to go play and you don't know anyone uh, affiliated with the course, definitely worth going and playing Taconic. Um, and then Wabika is the other option. It is also in Williamstown. Uh, it is another kind of charming little place. It's got a good driving range. You could go and hit balls there before going and playing Taconic, which doesn't have a driving range. They've just got a little short game area and a net to hit into if you really want to be dialed in or. I uh, need to rub off some rust um, if you're playing at, after a little bit of time away. Uh, but Wabika is also a really good course. You could go and you could play both of those courses in uh, in a weekend for sure. This is this area I know better than some of the other ones. So I'm also going to throw out some different things you could do not on the golf course uh, or things a significant other could do while you while you're playing golf. Um, Greylock, which is uh, the highest point in Massachusetts, is um, near Williamstown. 
you can either go hike it. You could just drive up for the view. Um, it's a pretty, pretty stunning place. You can do a bunch of different kinds of hikes. So Mount Greylock is definitely an option. The Clark Museum um, at Williams College is an incredible museum. The amount of uh, kind of masterpieces they have there because the history behind the museum is it was actually built to be outside of a blast radius if there was a nuclear bomb dropped on Boston or on New York. It's in this area that during the Cold War, that was a fear that all this art would be lost. And so the Clark Museum uh, was was basically built and then used as a place to, to keep um, some incredible art. Uh, Mass Mocha is in North Adams, kind of a wild museum. If you like contemporary art, it's not always my thing, but it's kind of a cool building to walk through and and see some different different stuff there. If you go to Mass Mocha in North Adams, there's also an outstanding brewery right by the museum uh, called Bright Ideas. They make a ton of great beer, super low key. Um, you can sit outside in the summer. There's a I think that's like a, it used to be a barbecue place. And now I think it's, you can get steak and cheese across the street and they let you bring the food in because they don't serve their own food. Um, so Bright Ideas is another really good option. We have stayed at the Williamstown Inn, which is, you can walk to Taconic from the Williamstown Inn. Uh, they are dog friendly. Uh, it's just at the end of Main Street there in Williamstown. Um, charming little area, a couple of restaurants you can go to uh, without getting in your car. So that's one place you can stay. And then another great place that we stayed at this December, my brother's band played a show at Tourists, which is right across the street from the, I think it's the North Adams Airport, but there's an airport on your way through um, North Adams into Williamstown. And on the right, there is a place called Tourists and it's kind of a revamped motorside inn. So it's got, you know, entrances are right, on the street, um, long row of doors. Everything is made to feel like you're kind of in a tree house. It's, it's a, it's a really very nice place. Great restaurant there as well. And, you know, it's another, it's another good spot. It's a little on the pricier side. I think they require maybe two or maybe they require three nights, uh, for a stay. There's also some other places around, but we've, we've stayed at the Williamstown and we loved the Williamstown Inn during COVID. It had just opened, um, so they had some pretty great deals kind of in the 2020, 2021 window of time. Um, so Taconic and Wabiga, good weekend trip. If you are from the Boston area and you're driving kind of out route to, to get to Williamstown, you could tack on a stop at somewhere like Crump and Fox, which is in Burnage town. You it's a might be a little bit out of the way, but it's a definitely a spot you could play on the way out or on the way back if you didn't want to play Wabika um, and you just wanted, knew you wanted to play 36 holes and play two really, really good golf courses. You could tack on Crump and Fox instead of Wabika, or you could tack on Crump and Fox in, and Wabika, whatever you want to do. Um, but there's that's a that's another good good option um, as well. So Taconic, Wabika, you might have to fork over a little bit to play Taconic, I think. It's it's worth it to see it and play it once in a summer. Williamstown Inn is a good place to stay. Tourists, which is a little bit farther outside of Williamstown, you might have to get in a car to get to some places, uh, but it's an excellent place to stay. Visit the Clark Museum. Visit Mass Mocha. Go get some beers at Bright Ideas. They make these great crowlers, uh, big cans you can, you can uh, take home with you uh, and kind of split with three, four people when you get home. And go check out uh, Mount Greylock. So that's a really good weekend, I think. And if you're coming, you know, I know maybe people from upstate New York don't listen to this podcast, but it's almost as close. It's closer to Albany than really anywhere else. So it's a good place for uh, people from upstate New York or whatever that yeah, that's upstate New York. I think, I don't know. They keep changing the name on me. Um, whether it's Western New York now there's upstate New York. Uh, but if you're in the Albany area, this is another good place to, to check out and, and go play. That's trip number one that I'm recommending. Trip number two, another bigger one. Um, I'd say after this one, the other ones will go, I'll go through a little bit faster. Uh, but these are, this one I have done. I have done this with three buddies. This might be, this is 
where I did my bachelor party. Uh, this, what I'm giving you right now is not what I did on my bachelor party, but I played a little bit of golf, my bachelor party up in the Quichi area. Um, and then in the summer of 22, my buddy tongue, who has been on this podcast a long time ago, uh, he got into golf during COVID. He lives in Richmond. He flew up and I picked him up in the, at, at the, uh, airport. We drove up to, um, we drove up to Vermont and we played a bunch of golf with two other friends, my friends, Pat and, and Matt. And this is how we did it this particular trip. I have some notes that I will definitely kind of share as, as maybe things I would do differently. We played a lot of golf. Um, and there are three guys who don't typically play a lot of golf in a, in a short span. So we were, uh, we were leaking oil towards the end of this trip, but if you've got some golf sickos and you want to go all out and play a ton of golf, this was a pretty good trip. So we drove up Friday afternoon to Woodstock, Vermont. Uh, we were we got an Airbnb in Quichi, which is maybe an important part of this, which I'll explain in a moment. But we just drove up. We went straight to the golf course at Wood, at the Woodstock Inn, and we played 18 holes at twilight on Friday evening. Um, kind of a nice way to just go and play a little golf. Super low key spot. Um, it's where Keegan Bradley learned how to play and grew up. His dad, I believe, was the pro there. Uh, for for a while, it's not my favorite golf course. It's not one that I would really tell everyone to. They have to go play. Um, it's got some really, frankly, annoying holes where you're hitting into tiny little areas, and there's a creek that kind of wanders around and makes holes. I don't know, kind of kind of silly. Some funny walks between tees and greens where you're going way out of your way for kind of an old classic golf course. It doesn't have a lot of that quick walk, short walks, um, kind of charm to it. You're, you're kind of hoofing your bag between greens and tees, walking, walking holes, almost feeling like you're, you know, let's say you're, I think it maybe was the back nine, you play 12 and then you almost walk 200 yards back to play 13. And then you walk in another hundred yards back to play 14. You're just really kind of walking all over the place, but we played it, um, it for what it is not a bad way to just kind of like settle into a weekend. If you're feeling like you really want to play golf on that Friday and you're okay, maybe cramming in a dinner at the end of the night and getting home on the later side and kind of getting settled. You also don't have to do that part of it. And you can just go straight to the house or play nine holes at Woodstock or not play any golf at all, but that's up to you, but you could go play Woodstock in. You don't have to stay at the inn to play there. Uh, it was pretty easy to get a tee time. We played in July uh, and we were really like the last group on the golf course. It was the, the sun was setting as we finished. Um, and then what we did from there is we got dinner at Worthy Kitchen. Worthy Kitchen is in Woodstock. Delicious food. Uh, just really good. You're in Vermont, so you're going to have awesome beer selection. And Worthy Kitchen is certainly worth checking out. It's for us, it was on the way back to our to our place, but just a really good spot. Low key, you kind of order at a counter, you sit down, they bring you your food. Um, just, just really, really solid. Like I said, great beer list. If you are with family and this isn't a guy's trip or a bachelor party, Billings Farm is a really good spot to bring kids to. I've been to it with my wife and you just kind of walk around a lot of history, um, get to see the animals and kind of learn a little bit about the area. So the Billings Farm is definitely worth checking out if you if you've got time could be a thing you do Friday night instead of playing golf um, and then on Saturday we we binged on golf and we played Queechi clubs Highland and Lakeland it was a trillion degrees um, we walked so that was maybe a little taxing on the front we, we rode on the back uh, but we walked to the Highland. We had to tee off a little bit on the later side because the last guy in our group, the fourth in our group, um, drove up Saturday morning. So he couldn't make it Friday night. So he needed a little bit more time to get up there. So we teed off at like 10 o'clock, nine, maybe it was, I think it was 10, which meant we were cramming 36 holes into a, a shorter time and our, our turnaround was was kind of tough. Quichi Club has two incredible golf courses. They are really good. They are very different. Um, I played there a bunch when I was um, kind of just outside out of college. My family had a little 
one bedroom condo in Quichi and you get a pretty good deal. If you own property in Quichi, you are, I don't know if it's you're automatically a member or you get kind of first dibs on membership. And, um, but so I played there a bunch with my, with my dad, um, kind of in the man, like early 2010s, late 2000s, we would go up there and, and play golf. Um, really good golf courses. The catch with this is, um, you also have to call like four days in advance to get a tee time. I had a friend who was a member who was nice enough to call up and get us our morning tee time, which was going to be the harder one to get on short notice. You will absolutely be able to get a tee time four days in advance. Um, by calling, we got our afternoon tea time that way. Uh, and it was not a problem at all. There's also, if you email, we stayed in Quichi. If you email or through Airbnb, reach out to the person who owns the, the property. Many of them, like I said, are members. And if you just ask, they, I've had other instances where people have actually made me a tea time or given me kind of the whatever I need to be able to call a week in advance to make a tea time at, at Queechy club. Um, because as a property owner, they can, they can help you get a tea time if you're staying on the property. So that's another thing you can do. Highland and Lakeland are really good. They were really fun. Um, Highland is probably the harder of the two golf courses. It kind of lives up to its name. It's through, kind of the mountains. Quichi is also a ski, a very small kind of ski mountain. Uh, I think they do, they make their, they make their hay as kind of a training mountain. Um, Killington is a little bit up the road and that Highland, it kind of plays on that side of the property where the ski hill is. Um, so you're hoofing, if you're hoofing your bag, you're making it, you're walking a lot. And we were pretty wiped, took us longer than we hoped. Um, but really good golf course really fun. And then we played Lakeland. We, we kind of, we got lunch, we grabbed some beers, we got a golf cart and we drove the second nine, which is, I think as I get older, I've heard other people talk about this, but if you're playing 36 holes in a day, that's kind of a nice way to do it. I don't love riding all the time, but if I'm going to, it's going to be after I walk 18 in the morning, um, to just ride 18, kind of relax we played a fun game where I played against the other three guys, best ball. So, and I gave, I think I gave him a shot a hole. Uh, so we had a kind of a fun match, just goofed around, um, hit a bunch of good shots, played as the sun was setting Lakeland, the last few holes play around, uh, Lake Pinio, uh, which is a lake is a, maybe a, a strong, a strong word for, for what it is, but it's kind of like a man-made it's bigger than a pond, but Lake is Lake is maybe not quite the right word, but uh, just just two really good golf courses to go play. So that was Saturday. We finished late. We had dinner at home, and then we played on the way back to Boston on Sunday. We stopped at Montcalm, which is in Enfield, New Hampshire, right off of 89. So you don't have to, you know, it's on the way home, literally, if you're driving back towards Boston and or anywhere eastern Massachusetts or New Hampshire. And Montcalm used to be fully private. I believe the story behind it was a guy just wanted his own little golf playground and he built this pretty exclusive golf course. And then over time it became really hard to keep an exclusive golf course open, particularly through the 2008, 2009, when people really believe it or not, weren't playing a lot of golf and uh, didn't have the money to play golf. And it was hard to have the money to run a place without any sort of membership. So it became semi-private, semi-public, whatever you want to call it. So you can get a tea time there. Again, that was no problem to get a tea time. Um, and they do a little stay and play package where we we ran into some people in the parking lot who were telling us that they were, they had joined as members um, and they get a discount at, a, at like a hotel down the road. So they would just come up for, you know, a weekend and they'd play a ton of golf and they'd get a discount at the hotel um, and then they'd go home and they would do that, you know, a, a, enough times during the year to make it worth their while. The golf course is again, very good. It hosted the New Hampshire women's am last year. Uh, it is like, it is championship golf. You're, you're playing through some crazy property because across the street or across 89, again, there's another ski hill, 
uh, called Whaleback Mountain. Um, and so you're kind of playing the same type of land that's <laughs> that the ski hill is on on the other side of the highway. So you get some pretty steep slopes. You're doing some, you're doing a lot of climbing. They require you if you are not playing with a member to ride a cart, which we were kind of fine with given the weekend that we had had, um, having already played 54 holes in a pretty short order. And so that was fine, especially after we played and looking back and realizing how much walking, um, we would have had to do. So that was a, a really great weekend. And then Drop tongue off at the airport and he headed home and, uh, and that was it. So really good, fun trip. Definitely one you could do with a group. Vermont's got awesome food, awesome beers, good restaurants. You can kind of pick and choose. I wish that Hanover Country Club was still open, but Dartmouth closed it. There would have been another place you could go play instead of Woodstock. Um, so I, and I would encourage anyone to let me know if you have if you know that area and you know of a place that you might drive through on 91, if you're maybe a Western mass person or a, a New Yorker or someone in Connecticut and you're driving down 91, if there's any golf course, that's kind of the same um, in the same position as Montcalm where it's right off the highway, easy to get to where you could play on your way home or on the way up. Uh, I, I would love to, I would love to hear about it. So that's that trip. So drive up, we did a Friday night. We played Woodstock in. We had dinner at the Worthy Kitchen. We woke up. Uh, we hung out in the morning. We played Queechee Highland. And then we played Queechee Lakeland. You're going to need a four-day advance to uh, make tea times there. It might be five, but worth calling the pro shop. They're, they're very accommodating um, up there. Just super nice and are, just want people to play their golf course. And then on the way home, we played Montcalm in Enfield, New Hampshire. Really good weekend. 72 holes in 40 in 48 hours basically so we really crammed it all in uh that was a fun one next one is one i have not done um we're gonna go back to the to the fancy side of things and i've got i've got two kind of different main trips that i'm i'm gonna give you i don't know how perfect these are one i have done and one i have not done i've just it's one that i I've kind of dreamed up in my mind that maybe I would like to do. I've, I've got my mind kind of set on trying to play Cape Arundel this year. It's in Maine. It's uh, kind of close. It's in Kenny Bunkport. Um, it's private, but you can get on it at certain times of the week. I believe Mondays are pretty popular and it is awesome. I played it a long time ago, probably maybe 15 years ago at this point. And remember, really enjoying it. It is super short, very well known for its greens. Fried Egg did a, a video on it. There's a bunch of really good stuff uh, from some various people on YouTube and Instagram that you can go and and uh, and look at. Good Eye Candy. I don't have any videos, so there's nothing on on um, on this particular video that you're going to see from, from Cape Arundel. Uh, but it's expensive. It's going to run you from May 20, from May 12th, which is kind of their rough opening, I would imagine, uh, for public play to May 25th, you're paying 125 bucks during the week and 150 on the weekend to play. The same prices go for October 10th to close. So they're kind of shoulder season, which in May is two weeks and in October, who knows how long it is. Um, 125 during the week, 150 on the weekends. If you want to play at peak season, which is May 26th to October 9th, it's 225 um, on the weekends and 175 during the week, I believe. Um, I have, I have, I think I got my prices wrong here. So, but I think that's, uh, that's what I read, but it's, you're going to, you're going to be paying kind of a premium price. If you want to play it over 4th of July weekend, because you happen to be up there or Labor Day weekend, it is $250 to play um, in, in those, in the, I think it's July 1st to the 4th or September, whatever the uh, Labor Day weekend dates are, you're going to pay 250 to play up there, but it's supposed to be an awesome golf course. It's, it's one I, I, I I'm not going to take a weekend to go play. I think it might be a day trip for me. I just try to steal up there for a day and, and play it. And then of course I have played up there more recently is the ledges that's in York. That was another 
that was a day trip I took to go play with my buddy Tung, who, um, you know, grew up in, in South Portland, was visiting his family. So it kind of became a little bit of a middle ground, but you could drive up, you could play the ledges on the way up, finish your drive towards Kenny Bunk, Kenny Bunkport, find a place to stay up there, play Cape Arundel, drive home the next day. Could be a, a really good little one day overnight trip with, uh, with this would probably be with some, you, you'd want some golf sickos and some guys who appreciate, um, you know, good architecture and, and, and that kind of stuff. Cause Cape Arundel is, is, uh, at the tippy top of a lot of people's lists as far as how great the greens are. Um, it's a super short golf course and I, I think that can kind of maybe turn some people off, but if you want to go see just a really, really great golf course, Cape Arundel, and then you could play the ledges, which I liked, I liked a lot. I thought it was, it had some really good holes. It's kind of like big and brawny and you got rock outcroppings and some, you know, big downhill holes and some blind tee shots. They had the corn Ferry tour. Um, Monday qualifying was there when they had the work from Maine uh, open, I think is what it was called. And so it, it, it's got some teeth. If you want to go all the way back, it has some teeth. It's, um, it's kind of, you know, your typical New England golf, uh, what people might picture tree lined rock outcroppings, blind shots, some, some big par fours. Um, so that's another really quick one that I just wanted to throw out there. Cause I think it could be a, a really good overnight trip. If you had a little bit of time, if you wanted to go up on a Sunday and then play Cape Arundel on Monday. Uh, but that's, that's definitely one that I, that I recommend. Here's another one that I have done. It's a little more spread out in Maine. And it's spread out in Maine because of where my friend's house is up there and who I was staying with when we kind of planned this trip out. So I drove from Boston and I met him at Poland Springs. This was this was right before I started the quest. This was another kind of thing that made me realize like, oh, I can I, I'm okay driving a long distance and playing a little bit of golf and, and getting home the next day or two days later, um, or making a day trip. So I went up, I played Poland Springs, which is a Donald Ross at this kind of lovely little setting. Um, you're kind of on the water. It feels a little bit like you're going back in time, uh, some old buildings on the, on the property and just like not terribly long, not terribly challenging. You've got, you can kind of wail away on some holes, some really cool greens, some short par fours, like a lot of cool little Donald Ross pieces um, in there. I remember feeling like I was breaking the law with Massachusetts plates in the, in the parking lot, because this was early June of 2020 when we were still not allowed to play golf in the state, or it was just about to open, uh, which is crazy to think. So that's part of the reason I did this trip too. Uh, my buddy was up in Maine and I thought I'm going to go up and see him and see if I can play some golf. So we played Poland Springs, which is 50 to 60 bucks super affordable. You're in a good spot. You're seeing some Donald Ross golf course. It's pretty good. Then we went and played Bethel. And I want to say we played Bethel the same day. I can't quite remember. And I don't have a lot of, I don't have any kind of a, a lot of pictures from this trip, but Bethel's 75 bucks. Um, it's not quite like the price is a little higher. I wouldn't, I think I'd rather play Poland Springs again. If you kind of let me pair them up, um, or, or compare them, but they were, uh, Bethel is another, is another good course. I think I remember kind of getting eaten alive by some bugs up there. Just kind of, mar it's kind of wet and marshy, uh, land. And I think we had had a lot of rain, so it just felt kind of soggy, but another place with some, with some good holes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's at Bethel Inn, which is this another kind of old, you get the wooden buildings and some, you know, people kind of wandering around who are just on vacation, uh, very laid back, uh, kind of life. So Bethel Inn was another place we played. We, I went up with the intention or the hope, the long-term hope was that we play Sunday river and Sunday river had an event. So we couldn't play Sunday river, which was a bummer, but whatever, it's fine. And instead we found a place called Fox Ridge, which is in Auburn, Maine. And this was on the way home. So I went up we played our 36 holes, uh, stayed the night in, in, uh, kind of the Bethel area. And then I drove home the next day. So it was, it was, a, it was a long trip. 
and you could maybe spread it out over one extra day uh, is, isn't a bad idea. But Fox Ridge in Auburn, which is kind of close to Bates College, which is um, a little bit on the way home for me from Boston, really, really pleased with, with that round. It was 60 bucks at the highest price right now, uh, as far as I could see on the website. Fun golf course, uh, kind of open, but you get a couple holes that kind of challenge you off the tee. From what I remember, uh, you're playing, you know, in Maine, so you're playing some big downhill shots and um, some cool views and some spots. So that was a Fox Ridge was a, a place I I kind of liked, and I would recommend going up and. And playing it. If you live anywhere near that area, if you're kind of adventurous and you want to go play golf somewhere a little bit different, go go check out Fox, Fox Ridge. I, I don't know of any other places around there. I've never played any other place around there, so I can't tell you where else to go. But you could play Fox Ridge. You could maybe go up and play Sunday River. Um, kind of are places that you could you could go check out. But Poland Springs, Bethel, and then Sunday River or Fox Ridge or all four if you wanted to go nuts. Um, is another is another trip that I have made partly without the Sunday River in there. Um, so that's another one, kind of on the on the more affordable side. You're spending a little bit more time in your car, and maybe you could take the Cape Arundel and Ledges trip and and combine them. You could play Ledges on the way up, and then Poland Springs, or play Cape Arundel and Poland Springs. Um, Maine's a big state. Last trip that I kind of really thought about. And, and liked two golf courses I have not played one. I have walked and one I have kind of seen from the side of the road. And this would be, um, a bigger trip because you have to get on a ferry going to Nantucket and playing Maya Comet is something that I think every person who can do it should do it. What I mean by that is you've got to, you've got to drive, you've got to get a, get on a ferry. You probably have to stay a night in Nantucket, um, or you've got to get a place on the Cape that's close so you could kind of take a ferry back that night. But it there, it's, it's a little bit more, um, involved than just driving to Crump and Fox or going to play the ranch or Taconic. There's just, there's a little bit more, more there, but my comment, I've, the only time I've seen it was during the U S mid am, I caddied for, uh, for a buddy in, in, uh, in that event, I got to walk Sankety head and caddy firm there. I got to walk my comet and they are both really good. I mean, Sankety is, is private. It's not a place you're, you're going to be able to get on, uh, by calling four days in advance. It's not that kind of place. And my comet just held its own com comparatively to the two. I mean, it was, it was really good. Everything from the bunkering to the greens, to the routing, to the, just the kind of the, the size and the scope of the place. If my Comet was on the mainland, it would be the best public golf course in the state. I would say it would definitely, I mean, it already kind of is in the rankings, but I think just the amount of attention it would get when we think about other states that have these outstanding public facilities and great golf. Massachusetts maybe doesn't quite measure up. We have a lot of it. We have a, definitely a, qu a quantity of golf courses. I am learning that the hard way in this quest. There's just also that just there's no super, super primo place, right? George Wright is amazing. Um, the ranch, Crump and Fox, like there's all these really, really good places. People love Pine Hills. People want to stand for granted links if they want, whatever you can, you can have them. But my comment, if it was in the mainland would be outstanding. It is expensive to play. I actually had no idea how much it costs to play until I looked it up um, this morning. It is a $245 round in the kind of peak season. They stay open through the winter. So you can if you if you see good weather coming at some point in the winter and you can steal away and hop on a ferry, you could do it that way too. But my comment, amazing. And then there's a nine holer there that you could also play 
It's called Sconset. It's kind of in the shadow of Sankety um, on the east coast of the of Nantucket, or at least on the east side of Nantucket. I have never played it. I drove by it. I know that people really like it. It is kind of also uh, joy. I think it's kind of part of the Maya Comet. Um, they're they're connected in in some way, whereas just as two public golf courses, kind of like Bayberry and and Bass River are Yarmouth public golf courses um so that you could tack on nine holes if you did end up staying over or if you just happen to be going on vacation to nantucket bring your golf clubs because you can play my comet if you want to fork over a little bit of money it is awesome it's really really good uh, i heard i've heard stories about my comet people uh, like regulars being sometimes annoyed that sankety members are snapping up tea times at Maya Comet because Sankity members like to play Maya Comet and they will grab tea times. And if enough of them every weekend do that on a rotation, it kind of steals away from the ability of the public to play Maya Comet. So that's how good it is. Um, for whatever you want to say about membership doing that, it's a public golf course. Uh, I'm not, I'm not crazy about that being the case. Um, I think people who can't be a member somewhere should be able to to play public golf, but it goes to show how good my comet is and um, go, go check that out. So that would be a little bit more of a trip. I know there's people might be saying, well, what about the vineyard? You could obviously go and, and play, you know, you can fork over a bunch of money and play farm neck on the vineyard and go play Royal Chappie. Uh, last week's podcast, Kevin brought up Mick Meadows, which is a nine holer. Uh, that, you know, is a really good public track that uh, he kind of dove into and talked about. I haven't played that place in a really long time. and have to get back and check it off. So, you know, the vineyard has its own little trip that you could definitely make too. And then, you know, there's there's other ways to get around New England. You can, I, I think people kind of love the Foxwoods trip, not a trip I've done. Um, not sure I will ever do it, but that's another place you could go. You can stay and you can, you can play some pretty good golf. It seems like people, um, really like going out there. Another one that's not in new England, but I've driven by because my wife lives in Ohio and we drive out there, um, every now and then is turning stone, which is another casino. Uh, and I, I've heard people say good things about that place. I've heard people kind of say it's meh, I'm not quite sure what the truth is, but it's another spot where if you have friends who live kind of in different parts of the East coast, it's a, it, it does become a little bit of a central location. I think it's like a three or four hour drive from, from me in Boston. You just kind of just go down right down the pike and, um, you're, you'll, you'll be there. So that's another kind of casino option as i was just talking about foxwoods um that popped into my head and then another one that i got to do last year and i i didn't put it on this list just because i don't know a lot about the other golf courses in the area is i went to hooper and it's a nine hole golf course they have an inn on the golf course so i slept i slept my window was looking out over the the first the first tee box in the in the putting green i woke up and you could just look out the window and you could see most of the golf course from from my window. Super affordable, one of the best nine hole courses in the world, according to a lot of people. I think it's outstanding. The people are super nice. Watkins Tavern has a bar. I had dinner. I had a couple of drinks. I walked upstairs. I went to bed. I was awake the next morning. I went and played nine holes. After playing nine holes in the, I played eighteen in the evening, um, and woke up, took some drone footage, played nine more holes and uh hit the road it was just a really good trip it's not terribly far it's in walpole new hampshire um and i know there's some other golf course in that area i've never really played it i uh, can't really vouch for any of it so but i would say go play hooper and get it get one night just you could play you could play it a bunch of times uh, it's super walkable super easy everyone is very very nice uh, it's all in one place. You could park your car. You can eat, drink, golf all right there for a day or two, whatever you want. So Hooper, 
is is great. I interviewed Josh Beer, who's one of the owners. He's a teacher in town. Um, the place is very interesting as far as its history. And um, he he this was a couple of years ago, and he kind of talked about the group that saved the golf course up there. Um, so it's a pretty it's a pretty incredible place with a very cool story. But Hooper is another one I would recommend going and, and playing and making a little bit of a trip out of it. And uh, that kind of does it. That's those are my those are my trips. Um, so we are going out. You can go to Williamstown and you can play Taconic and Wabika, and you could bring a significant other and go do a bunch of other things that I mentioned in there too. Uh, you can maybe the best bachelor party trip would be going up to New Hampshire, staying in Queechy, drinking some good beer, eating some good food at Worthy Kitchen, playing Woodstock in, playing both Queechy Club courses, and hitting up Montcalm on the way up or down. We hit it on the way down. You could also play that on the way up uh, if you're kind of driving in that direction. Uh, one personal one for me this year, at least as far as getting to, I want to go play Cape Arundel and and just revisit that place that I haven't seen in a long time. Maybe play the ledges on your way up or on your way back. You could just make a, a one night trip of it. Uh, you could also go up to Maine a little farther, go see Poland Springs, go play Bethel Inn play Sunday River and play Fox Ridge on the way home, which is in Auburn, kind of on the south. Or go to Nantucket, splurge a little bit, treat yourself uh, overall just to get there, to stay there, to eat there, to drink there. Uh, But my Comet is awesome. I've heard great things about Sconset. It's just a little nine hole uh, muni public track that that people seem to really like. Uh, So that's another another option. Go check out Hooper. That could just be a trip in itself. Go stay at the Watkins Inn, park a car, put your keys away, drink, eat golf. It's it's great. I know that people are going to be wondering where on the Cape can I go? I don't really have any solid Cape options. Um, you know, you could go play Highland Links way at the end uh, and and go stay there and play, maybe try to get on and play Chiquesset or uh, Chatham Seaside, um, kind of in that part of the Cape. But the Cape is a uh, the Cape is a funny one, and I think I'm I I got to do a little bit of work just as far as recommending some places out there and and going and going back and playing some places. That's the other the the other piece of it. As I don't really have a sense of what's close to each other and what I would recommend for a place to stay, um, Airbnbs like it, it kind of gets a little a little more expensive. And Nantucket was my was my splurgy one. Maybe Williamstown's a little bit splurgy too. Um, if you want to stay at tourists or Williamstown Inn, but the other ones are pretty are, you know, can get you, you can get a long way with, with a little bit. So those are my weekend trips. I will certainly do this again as I kind of build up more, uh, more stock in, uh, in my golf course quest, especially through Massachusetts. I will hit up the Cape. I promise my apologies to those folks. I tried to get a Western mass in there. Cause I know that's another pocket Cape and the West are my two, my two, uh, spots. They're just so far away have to really plan to get out there. And I'm looking forward to doing that this year. Thanks as always for listening, for making it all the way through. And please subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening. Check it out on YouTube. And until next time, get them straight.